بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Today is the eighth episode of Why Sincere Questions, Sincere Answers, and today's question is Why can't Muslims have fun? So this is a question that many of us might hear many times. Uh, children often ask this question. But um, this is uh, directed not towards, less towards children, more towards adults, because the same question often comes to all of our minds when we're stuck in a, uh, in a situation where uh, there, in, uh, among a large group of people, uh, many of them might not uh, be Muslims, identify as Muslims, and they're about to have a good time. And these are our um, colleagues, our friends, and there are certain restrictions that prevent us from having the good time with them uh, that would make us feel part of the crowd. And so the question comes to our minds, why can't Muslims have fun? So what we'll be doing in this, um, in this episode is uh, we've seen in the previous two episodes the difference between an Iman-driven life and an entertainment-driven life. Um, this question, it comes from the perspective of an entertainment-driven life. However, uh, because, of the, because we live in a world today now where being religious is something that is rare, something that is strange, something that uh, unfamiliar, uh, the dominant culture, uh, the dominant perspective from which most people, they make their life decisions, they, the way that they live their lives, even when they are Muslim, is somehow affected by the perspective of an entertainment-driven life. And entertainment and fun, they go hand in hand. So, uh, so in, in today's episode, we'll begin to understand and appreciate uh, the perspective of the entertainment-driven life more. And it's important for us to understand it and appreciate it so that we understand the difference between that perspective and the perspective of an Iman-driven life so that we don't get confused when these kinds of questions, they pop up. So, uh, so we, let's begin uh, by trying to understand what exactly this question means. Why can't Muslims have fun? Let's think about the question. So, um, uh, let's uh, look at the verse that we've been uh, beginning our previous two episodes with, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Surely those who believe and work righteous deeds, they will have as a gift the vast gardens of paradise, wherein they shall dwell forever, never wishing any change from them, they shall have therein what no eye has ever seen, what no ear has ever heard, nor has ever occurred to the heart of any human being, and they will never get bored, complete and unending pleasure, unadulterated by any kind of boredom. Sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> so um, so I think the the first thing that we need to observe is that Muslims will have fun. They'll have a lot of fun. And um, from the Quran, we learn that um, others won't. Um, but the, when somebody asks this question, why can't Muslims have fun? Then there is a underlying assumption in this question that I'd like that it's important that is important to bring out. The underlying assumption is, it's not just why can't Muslims have fun, but it's why can't Muslims have fun now, right now. You know, forget about what's going to happen tomorrow, the day after, uh, a year from now, 10 years from now, after death, after life. Why can't Muslims have fun now, right now? That's the question. Okay, so, so it's important for us to understand this as we proceed in our analysis of the question and in our reflection on how such a question should be answered. So, um, so now that we understand, do we understand this uh, this assumption? Why can't Muslims have fun now, right now? Uh, let's pause for a minute and think about the meaning of the word fun. What what exactly does fun mean? Well, fun. 
for different people means different things. So I'm going to take the worst case scenario. So uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, you know th this might not, this is definitely not, none of these things are my idea of fun. I love to have fun. I love to have a good time. Um, and, and I think one of the things that we learned from this episode is that we should all have a good time. And Muslims can have fun. But uh, I'd like to pause for a, for a minute and to ref reflect on the idea that, um, that there are certain kinds of things that are fun for some people which uh, which are uh, you know they they we shouldn't do right so for uh, a drug addict drugs are a lot of fun for somebody who is an alcoholic um, drinking alcohol is a lot of fun for someone who uh, uh, who is addicted to pornography uh, watching pornography is a lot of fun uh, you know for someone who's a criminal someone who's a serial killer, killing people is a lot of fun. So, uh, so you know, if somebody is coming from this perspective and they say, why can't Muslims have fun? Well, you know, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, we don't, that's, that's the kind of fun that nobody should be having. And this is, but why? Because this kind of fun is harmful. All of these things are harmful. Harmful to who? Um, they're, they're harmful to the person who does them. All of these things, they harm the person who does them. They spoil his nature. They turn him into a bad person. They, um, they are all addictions. Um, every kind of addiction is harmful. So they're all harmful to the person. But um, in, uh, to the, uh, this, this question, when this question is asked, why can't Muslims have fun, then... Um, then the underlying assumption is that you that you're having fun that's not harmful to others because if you want to harm yourself and you're having fun while you're doing it then there's nothing wrong with it that's that's the perspective of the entertainment driven life um, so uh, so now uh, so now we would both agree somebody uh, both from the perspective of an iman driven life and from the perspective of an entertainment driven life we would both agree that if someone is having fun doing something that is harmful to other people, then we should exclude that from the question. And uh, that shouldn't be included in the question. Um, but I want you to think about this for a second, because, uh, because uh, is it, uh, is it, uh, it's not just about uh, not having fun uh, that harms other people. It's also related to the idea that I brought out uh, just a little while ago, which about now. It's uh, related to the idea of harming others now. Um, and so this question, this, this idea of the now and the here and the now and forgetting about anything that might or will happen later on, this underlies this question. So uh, as, um, as um, uh, from the perspective of an iman-driven life, from the perspective of someone who, um, who acknowledges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their Lord and acknowledges their responsibility to him and has iman, they accept, they submit, they say, yes, Allah, you are my Lord. I acknowledge that you have placed these obligations upon me. I'm weak. Uh, I seek your forgiveness. Be generous to me. I need you. This is Iman. Uh, from this perspective, when we look at drugs, alcohol, pornography, crime, um, we the reason why these are things that we don't want to do is not just because they're harmful to other people. They're also harmful to us, but in the afterlife. They're harmful to us in the afterlife. So the perspective of an Iman-driven life is not restricted to the here and now and right now and forget about the future. The perspective of an Iman-driven life looks beyond this lifetime into the next lifetime. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in these verses, He says, He tells the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He says, فَذَكِّرْ Remind people, remind others. Remind others of what? remind people to 
of the uh, that they have they should that this life is an opportunity to win unto something that will last forever and if this opportunity is wasted then it will lead you to a torment and a damnation that will last forever and so don't focus on the here and now be far sighted so remind فذكر in نفعت الذكرى if the reminder is of use سيذكر من يخشى the one who fears will heed will take heed ويتجنب هل أشقى but the most wretched will flout it will flout the reminder will turn away from the reminder he'll say I don't care the only thing that I'm concerned about is now um, and who what will happen to this wretched person he says he who will be flung into the great fire ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا wherein he will neither die in other words there will be no end to his suffering death is a relief from suffering he will have no relief from suffering ولا يحيا nor will he live in other words nor nor will he uh, nor will he um, uh, live uh, a life that is uh, that is that has any enjoyment in it something is only is only called life when uh, it's only deserves to be called life when there is some kind of pleasure in it let's stop here let's think about this um, if somebody flouts a reminder to be farsighted and to avoid doing something right now that will bring you eternal felicity in the next life and he goes and and he does something that takes him to the hellfire forever is this really a kind of fun that we want to have is this really something that we want to do no it's not let's look at the other person the other person he says قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Surely he has indeed succeeded who purifies himself. How? By having Iman. The purification here is having Iman. And in our previous two episodes, we've exercised this idea of having Iman. And this is something that we should renew every day. Have Iman. And, uh, and because this is purification. When we do that, we purify our souls who purifies himself and remembers the name of his Lord, says Allahu Akbar, and then worships and prays and prostrates to his Lord. This person is the one who has succeeded. But he says, Bal dunya. But you prefer the life of this world, khayrun wa even though the hereafter is better and more lasting. This is the important thing that we need to remember. So we need so when when from the perspective of an iman driven life, the reason, the primary reason why we don't do drugs, alcohol, pornography, or crime, the primary reason is not just that it's harmful to other people, but that it's harmful to yourself later on in the next life. Bal tuqsirun al hayat al dunya wal akhirat khayrun wa abqa. You prefer the life of this world, even though the hereafter is better and more lasting. So uh, the, the, the theme, the thing that distinguishes the entertainment-driven life from the Iman-driven life is that the entertainment-driven life focuses on the now, whereas the Iman-driven life is far-sighted and it looks ahead to the afterlife. We want to look ahead to the afterlife. I want you to ask yourself, and I want you to be honest, which one of the two is wiser? Is the one who says, I don't care what will happen, I just want to have fun now at any cost, is that person wiser? Or is the one who restrains himself from certain kinds of enjoyment because he fears the punishment the torment of the hellfire 
and he restrains himself in order to win unto eternal felicity in the next life, who is wiser? And we all know the answer to that question. And so when, 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 when this question is posed, why can't Muslims have fun now, right now, forget about the afterlife, this is just, this is just wrong-headed. It's a wrong-headed question. Now, having said that, um, it's important for us to also emphasize that Muslims can have fun now. We can have fun. And the vast majority of human actions are permissible. They're not forbidden. So we can, you know, we can eat, we can eat food. Food is a lot of fun. We can't eat pork, but you can have biryani. You can have a halal burger. You can have, uh, you can have pizza. You can have um, whatever it is that piques your taste and you enjoy. There's a way for you to do it in a, uh, there is a way that you can have that food and enjoy yourself and you can have a feast. Um, that's a lot of fun. Can't we have friends? And, 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 and have a party and enjoy ourselves with our friends as long, as long as there are certain restrictions that are observed, um, we, we can do that. We can have, you have, but what it forces you to do is it forces you to choose the kind of friend with whom you enjoy yourself. And that's good for you. It's good for you in this life and it's good for you in the next life. We can have fun with our spouse. You know, pornography is, is not the real thing. You know, get married and enjoy yourself with your spouse. And this is, this is halal. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created men and women. We can have fun. We can enjoy ourselves with our family, with our children, with our parents, with our cousins, with our uncles. We can have fun, we can sing songs. There's halal music, there's halal songs. Music, uh, music is not forbidden. There are certain kinds of music that, that, that are restricted, but there are many kinds of singing and music that are perfectly permissible and enjoyable. We can have merriment. We can, uh, we can uh, move to music, we can, sing, uh, we, can, uh, we can have a good time, we can give gifts, we can enjoy food, we can stay up late at night, um, uh, we can wear clothing, we can wear beautiful clothing. It's so strange in our times, um, you know, people want to wear beautiful clothing, well, what's the beautiful clothing? It's the absence of clothing. <laughs> so, no, we want, you want to wear good clothing that actually covers you up. Okay, and and the human being is beautiful when he wears nice clothing, not when he or she does not wear any clothing. We can get possessions. You can buy a mansion. You can buy a sports car. You can buy a private yacht. Um, you can have fun. All of these things are permissible. Muslims can have fun, and there are hundreds of ways for Muslims to have fun, but there are some restrictions that... Uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own benefit has placed on how to have fun. So we have to be creative, but there's hundreds of ways to Muslim, for, for Muslims to have fun. Um, now, that being said, uh, okay, uh, uh, what we're saying here is there are hundreds of ways for Muslims to have fun now. So Muslims can have fun now. But that being said, we have to remember that the perspective of an Iman-driven life is focused on the afterlife. Um, and, and so there are hundreds of ways that Muslims can have fun now, but we have to keep that and we have to prevent it from becoming the sole purpose of our lives, which is the perspective of an entertainment-driven life. So Muslims, there are hundreds of ways for Muslims to have fun now, but as they're having fun and the time for the Maghrib prayer comes, they stop and they make wudu and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they can go back to their fun.
Um, when Ramadan comes, they stop and they restrain from food and drink from morning till evening, and then they can go back and they can have fun um, and so on. There's, there's restrictions that need to be observed and these restrictions we saw in a previous episode are like the, is, are like the forbidden tree uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Adam, don't come near it. Um, so, uh, so, we, so Muslims, they, they have fun, but we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too. And the, the way to do this, the way to do this is summarized in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which he said, he said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, he said, inna dina yusrun, verily, religious compliance comes easily. The word deen in the Arabic language doesn't mean uh, religion. It means religious compliance. It means observing the, uh, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, verily, religious compliance comes easily. What does it mean? It means that there's ease in prayer. There's relief in fasting. There's pleasure in giving charity. Um, Hajj is a joy. Telling the truth makes you happy. Um, being generous and giving gifts is, uh, it's, it's, it, it makes you happy. So true, truly, true religion, true religion, true religious compliance is you find that people who are People who are truly religious, they are, they're not, uh, they're happy people. Um, and the happiest people that I have met are the people who are the most religious. Often we associate religious people with, uh, pe with, uh, being, with being glum, with being depressed, with being serious, by not, not being lighthearted. The, you know, I, in, in, my, in my experience, the happiest people that I have met are people who are truly religious. And they are, and, they, and they're happy. They spend time with each other. They have a good time. But they, and they also worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they find pleasure in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, religious, being a religious person requires a good and healthy balance and movement in the right direction. So how do we start off? We start off by looking at um, the, the, the bare minimum religious obligations. And the first obligation that we look at is the obligation of the prayer, praying five times a day. And if somebody doesn't pray five times a day, we start with once a day. We increase it to two, we increase it to three, and we begin with these. Um, and we have a, and while we're doing that, we take on something that we can handle, something that we can take with ease, and, we, uh, and then we keep moving forward. So, um, so religion, Islam, is a journey. It's a journey that we undertake in order to prepare ourselves for the, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the afterlife. And it's a journey of continual improvement. So, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he describes this journey in this hadith. And he says that verily religious compliance comes easily. And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَلَنْ يُشَادَ الدِّينَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا غَلَبَهُ And no one will make religious compliance difficult upon himself except that it will overcome him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, don't take on too much. Don't undertake to pray 1,000 rak'ahs every day because it's going to burn you out. You'll do it, and you'll be you'll be you'll be uh, you'll be driven, and you'll be motivated, and then it will become dry, and you and you won't be able to do it, and then you're going to put it all away. So what do you do? You do what you take something, you take some religious compliance, something that comes easily, and you make it a part of your life, and you keep on doing it, and then you take a little bit more, and then you keep on doing it, and you and you take a little bit more, and you keep on doing it. And you pad it out with uh, with having a good time, with having fun, 
within the restrictions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed and you keep on moving forward. So he said that verily religious compliance comes easily and no one will make religious compliance difficult upon himself except that it will overcome him. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Fasaddidu. So set yourself towards what is right. So you put you what does it mean set yourself towards what is right? You make the focus of your life the afterlife. And you work towards the afterlife. But you do it in a moderate way. He says, set yourself towards your right, waqaribu, try your best. Try your best without overburdening yourself. Try your best, move forward and rejoice and be happy. Wa abshiru. He said, do something moderate and, and abshiru. Why should you rejoice? You should rejoice because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you iman, which is the best act of worship that anyone can perform. You should rejoice because you prayed that prayer. You should rejoice because you fasted that fast. So when, you, when, when all of us break our fasts this evening, let's rejoice. It, we should be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us tawfiq to break our fast. If, if, we, if, we, if we can't pray 20 rakahs of taraweeh and we pray two, we should rejoice that we prayed two rakahs of taraweeh. If we, uh, if, you know, if it, whatever, whatever good it is that you can easily do, the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, turn towards it, do it, try your best and be happy. And he says, seek aid with the early morning, the early evening and something of the night. He's told us that there's three times that are blessed times. And if at these times you do something for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if you recite some Quran, if you do some extra worship, if you uh, sit down and you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you recite some, you make dua, you do some of the azkar that are transmitted from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At these times, then this will help you and it will, it will be, it will, and you won't need to do as much in the other parts of the day. What are those times? He says the early morning. And the early morning, the, it is the time after the Fajr prayer, between the Fajr prayer and sunrise, is a blessed time, is a Mubarak time. It's not permissible to pray at this time, but you can recite Quran, you can make dua, you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The early evening, the time between Asr and Maghrib is a blessed time. It's a Mubarak time. You can't pray at this time, but you can recite Quran, you can make dhikr, you can make dua at this time. And something of the night, um, after, after the Isha prayer, praying some extra rakahs, ideally after going to sleep, this is something, all of these things, they have a great good in them. And if you, and if you do that in the rest of the day, you don't, uh, uh, you don't do as much worship and the focus of the rest of your day is on earning a living, enjoying yourself, having fun, he says you will be just fine. So, um, so what, we, what we take from this hadith is that um, Muslims can and should have fun and you shouldn't overburden yourself with, uh, with, uh, with uh, religious, uh, uh, with religious, you shouldn't take on more religious uh, compliance than you, than, than you can handle. But so you can and you should have fun. However, it should be done in a balanced way that focuses you on your true benefit. What's the purpose of having fun? The purpose of having fun is that you that you that we realize our own human weakness. We're not angels. It's not possible for us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all day, every day. It's not possible for us to recite the Quran all day, every day, even though we would like to. We would we would like, we wish that we were able to, but it's not possible for us to do that. And so what do we do? We do it at certain times. And then we, we find relief from our, our, our worship. We find relief from our remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing something that's enjoyable, that we have fun with. So this is what it means to have fun in a balanced way that focuses you on your true benefit. But we don't do it in a way that distracts us from our true benefit. What is our true benefit? Our true benefit is the benefit that will last forever in the afterlife, in the next life. 
So this is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means when he said, Saddidu, do what's right, set your sights on the Akhirah and try your best and rejoice and be happy.